Welcome, my name is Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. I'm here with Stefania Palmer, who's the Asia editor. And we're reviewing the April issue of The Banker magazine. And Stefania, you wrote the cover story, which is on new banks in China. So why are we seeing new banks in China and who are these banks? So in uh, March 2014, uh, the China uh, Banking Regulatory Commission announced it would allow privately owned companies in China to apply for banking licenses. And this was a huge change in a banking sector. That uh, okay, because mostly the banking sector has been state owned up to exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. So uh, right now there are privately owned giants uh, such as Tencent, Alibaba, but also retailers like Suning uh, that are applying uh, to uh, become, uh, basically have a banking arm. So right. Okay. So the thing about these people is, I mean, these are, are, are tech companies, aren't they? So that, does that mean they're going to have a bit of an advantage on the tech front compared to the conventional banks? Absolutely. So they are privately owned companies that have a readily available, vast customer base, but can, that basically they can use to serve them with a uh, very advanced uh, technology platform, um, in Alibaba's case, a merchant platform, uh, and they have a great competitive advantage because they're far more tech savvy than the big four that are still struggling somewhat to modernize. All right, so, so in a way, I mean, we've heard a lot of scare stories internationally about you know, how Amazon and Google might go into banking. In some senses, it's already happening in China. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it is already happening. And analysts are absolutely sure that one of the strong political messages is to push the big four to modernize more uh, and to, I, I guess, strengthen and quicken their pace of modernization. OK, all right. So now, who are they going to serve, which is different from the, who the banks are already serving? So they will definitely be focusing on SMEs and uh, retail uh, consumers. And those are historically the segments of Chinese society that have been quite underserved, especially from the big four uh, side. And that is actually the reason why shadow banking came to be. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is vast potential. Uh, that it will also help the regulator to bring in those banks that are, or well, those banks, those institutions that are offering financial services to this underserved segments and sort of control the shadow banking situation a bit uh, okay, more. Okay, so you can see that there's some obvious benefits here for, from all sectors, really from the regulator, from the consumer's point of view. But what's it going to do for the existing banks? I mean, what sort of challenges is it going to provide to them? So uh, definitely there will be challenges in terms of uh, uh, technology um, advancement. Um, there will also be a challenge in terms of offering interesting rates of return. So for example, Alibaba's money market fund, Yue Bao, offered you know, up to 7% uh, rates um, in, in a market where the average maybe maximum is around 2%. Um, so that's definitely a challenge that the big four can't really meet. But at the same time, we definitely have to underscore the fact that the big four will always retain the advantage of having a very strong historical and political uh, valence in a society like China that has a very long memory and is very value-based. OK, exciting times in China. So we can read about the new banks in China in the April issue of The Banker magazine. Uh, order your copy at www.thebanker.com.